Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, this is a quick talk, so I'm going to have to dive right in. So this talk is, of course, about the six most common WCAG 2 errors, and this is according to automated tools. So really, at its heart, this is a talk about using automation effectively. Automation is something that gets talked about in the accessibility world frequently in only a negative light. And that's because automation can really only detect approximately 30% of types of accessibility errors. But that ability to detect errors is still really crucial. These tools, and it doesn't matter which tool, when we start to talk about these six errors, all of the automated tools can find them. They are a universal thing. These are simple errors. They are objective. And so using this automation to find these errors is going to save you a lot of money and effort. Automation is characterized in the accessibility world by quick results. It processes a high volume of data. You can crawl your entire website, pull up all of these documents, and you can integrate it with other testing tools. But it also comes with the challenges that it has an extremely incomplete scope. That's that 30% I talked about. And it has relatively low accuracy outside of some of these very objective problems. But that still comes with a lot of value. And this talk is ultimately also about efficiency. This is about using consultants effectively, and it's about using automation effectively. And automation in accessibility is a lot different from most web development testing. This is how the general purpose accessibility assessment goes. And this is what I do all the time. So this is from my personal experience. Somebody sends me the URL for an active live website that they've never had audited before. They've never looked at the accessibility of that site. I document painstakingly hundreds of repetitive issues throughout the site and also find a selection of unique or potentially very subjective problems. And then I send that client a monstrous, horrible, 100-plus page report describing everything they've done wrong. Shockingly, those reports are not wonderful. They're not fun to work with. They're overwhelming. They have so much information in them. So it would be great if we could make it so I did less work and you had a shorter document to deal with. Hundreds of repetitive issues. And in a very specific way, I can say that in recent assessments, I, would, I counted up, I looked at things that I'd been doing, and a full 50% of the issues I was reporting to clients could have been found with automation. These six most common errors come out of a study done by WebAIM. That's a nonprofit out of Utah that runs the WAVE Web Accessibility Evaluator Project. They did an automated analysis of the top million pages around the web. These are the million most frequently visited pages, the most popular pages. And they analyzed it. They've done this four times now in 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. And a few key selected statistics. On average, these pages exhibited about 51 errors per page. That's a little bit frightening. 96.8% of those pages had at least one failure. And if you went to Sarah Cannon's talk earlier, she mentioned a number of those 97.4% of pages had at least one failure in the 2021 study. So things are getting better <laughs> by a really, really small margin. And of these errors, 96.5% of every error they were able to detect autom with automation were one of these six types. Wow, that's only six different varieties of error that come up to that many, that high a percentage. Wouldn't it be great if you used some automation, dealt with that, and found them in advance? And just because it's only 30% of types of errors, don't imagine that these aren't impactful. These six errors, for your users, they can generate unidentifiable forms, unusable links, unusable controls. There's loss of information, things that people can't read, can't understand, or can't absorb. For your companies, this might lead to lost leads, lost sales, lost opportunities. 
It can be thousands of dollars in extra consultant expense, and you could just identify and document these easily. So I'm 10 minutes into my talk, and I haven't even talked about the errors. And that's why, oh, that's 10 minutes left. Hey, I misunderstood what I was told earlier. That's great. I was a little worried by being 10 minutes into the talk, and I haven't even addressed the title yet. But that's okay, because really this is about automation, right? So these are the top six errors. These errors are globally on the top million homepages are 96.5% of the problems found. Now, obviously, that's 96.5% within that narrow band of 30% that can be tested. Those other problems haven't been dealt with yet. But, as I mentioned earlier, in my own assessments, I found that a full 50% of my reports were automatically identifiable errors. So what that tells you is that these automatically detectable faults are overrepresented in the data. Those are more common than the more difficult problems to find. So getting through these is actually going to reduce the volume in a much more significant way. So the errors. Number one, low contrast text. That's where you've got your gray text on a white background, or you've got buttons that are yellow and white, or teal and white. Uh, these are very popular combinations. They're pretty, they're wonderful. That doesn't mean you can see them. You've got images with missing, generic, or repetitive alternative text. Now, to be clear, this is not images with inappropriate alternative text. That is not something that can be tested with automation. These are images where the alt attribute is literally missing. A missing alt attribute doesn't mean the same thing as an empty alt attribute. A missing alt attribute says, we have not told you what this is. An empty alt attribute says, we are declaring that this image is decorative. And those are very, very semantically key differences. Generic, that means that you've got something that's just been plugged in with the word image or graphic. And it's just over and over again, and it's what, there's no point to that. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't show anything. When a screen reader goes through these images, they are told this is an image. They don't need to also be told it's an image with the alt text image. The next one is form fields without labels. This is amazingly common. And that's partially because you've got a lot of form fields that use placeholders instead of labels. Placeholder is really not a label. It doesn't do the same thing. It's not permanent. It doesn't convey in the same way. It's also because sometimes form fields just have nearby text that happens to tell you what that form field is, but is only relevant if you're looking at it visually and doesn't offer any of the other benefits that a real associated label gives you. Then you've got empty links and empty buttons. This is most common because what you've got is a link that is containing an icon. It's a font icon. It's an SVG. It's an image that doesn't have an alt attribute. And all of those items, if they don't have text content, even if that text content is hidden, it doesn't necessarily have to be visible to be present, then they can't be used. And then the last one, which is very rare in WordPress, is a missing document language. This is an attribute on the HTML element that simply says what language the page is in. This is a Spanish page. This is a French page. This is a Japanese page. And that's critical for screen reader users because otherwise, the screen reader is going to read it in their, browse, in their operating system's installation language. You know the pronunciation rules for Japanese are a little bit different than the pronunciation rules for English. And if you try and pronounce English words with Japanese rules, it doesn't always work out. So automation tests for all of this. Automation can search for your text node. It can identify that color, parse the background, either from an image, a gradient, or color, frequently by using pixel sampling, because, in fact, parsing that element stack is extremely complex. And it can measure that contrast ratio. It will also check the font size 
so that it can tell you which contrast ratio is most relevant. WCAG includes different ratios for different needs. Some ratios are going to be higher because this text is small or it is very, or you're working to a higher standard. And then you just need to fix this by making changes. You have to change some of your color choices or come up with some of your color usages. This is the only one of these top six issues that imposes a design problem. This is the only one where you actually are going to have to go back to that client and you're going to have to tell them, sorry, you're going to have to change your brand colors. That can be an awkward conversation. It's not always necessary. Sometimes you just change the way their brand colors are used. Use it as a border or an ornament rather than as a background color. It's, that might be easier. It depends on the context. It depends on the design of the site. You can also just darken or lighten the text. You can add shadows or opacity in on text that's in front of an image, because images are highly complex. And when they change, it's hard to know for sure whether it's really going to work out. The images with missing alternative text, this is one of the simplest things for automation to do. You just search for the element and say, it's not there. Done. Now, the rules for actually deciding what it should be, those are more complicated. That's going to require you to actually investigate the image and work out what it is. But alt text does have some fairly straightforward rules. And there are resources to learn about more about how to do that. But the most important rule I want you to know is that alt text isn't about describing the image. Alt text is about describing the purpose of the image. And that may be describing the image, because sometimes the purpose of the image is to show people the image. But sometimes the purpose is as a link to another resource, in which case what that image is actually about is the target. It's about what does this link do. And so what a user actually needs when they encounter that is to know what they're going to be linked to. Form fields without labels, that's just as easy as the alt attribute for automation to find. It's all about just finding those element associations. Does this form field have an explicitly associated label? Or does it have an element wrapper? Does it have an ARIA label? You have to make sure those labels are there. You have to be present. And they have to be accurate. Accurate is not something the automation can do. It does not know what type of an email you should get. And it does not know what name field this is. So you have to make those decisions. But it can certainly tell you that there is a problem. The empty links and buttons, again, making sure there's a naming characteristic. Do you have an SVG file? The SVG element has some other characteristics. It's got tags that can be associated with it that'll give it an accessible name. There's a great article on CSS tricks about accessible SVGs. Uh, it takes very little time to make sure that those are fixed. Font icons can be a little bit trickier. Usually, those are going to need some screen reader text that's hidden to sighted people uh, that will expose what this control is supposed to do. And it's exactly the same problem, whether it's a link or a button. It doesn't matter to the solution what you're trying to do. It just matters the fact that you can't tell what it is if it's not labeled correctly. And then this last one, which I put last for two reasons. One, because it's a lower frequency issue, and also because if we didn't get to it, this is a very unusual problem to have in WordPress. Because frankly, themes have pretty well solved this. And there's a WordPress core function language attributes that adds that to the HTML element. You should look at your theme. If you're using a 10-year-old theme, who knows? It could be a problem. But most modern themes, it's handled. Finally. That automation accelerates your accessibility. It makes you work with consultants more effectively, and it makes your site better even before you have a conversation with one. Thank you very much.